Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Canty with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen here, I put this on Facebook the other day. How do you respond to God's no? And when God shut a door that you wanted to walk through, how do you handle it? I got a lot of wonderful good feedback, so much that I want to talk about it for a few minutes on my podcast. I want to call call this one, What Do You Do When God Closes a Door? Can we talk about it? Let's go. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty, pursuing my destiny, pursuing my destiny, yeah. Tell me, how bad do you want it? What's going on? What's going on? This is Jesse E. Canty. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? It's episode number 78, man. And this is entitled, When God Closes a Door. Man, this is going to get good. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, lead me, guide me, have your way. Be pleased. Touch the people that's listening, God. Let it minister, be right on time, what they need in their spirit. Let them hear you clearly. Even let them hear you more than they hear me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What do you do, man, when them, when when those doors close? Well, let me start off because I got four points I want to give you, five points I'm going to give you of what how, of why God would close a door. All throughout the Bible, when I went to do some studying on this, all throughout the Bible, it talks about open doors and it shows you how God will open doors throughout scriptures and stuff. It talks more about open doors. He said, I'll open a door that no man can shut. Uh, and, and all throughout scriptures, it talks about things like that and shows example where God will open doors of opportunity and open doors for ministry and et cetera. You have to put on your spiritual intelligent glasses to examine from revelation, excuse me, from Genesis to revelation or when you see God closes doors, because it doesn't always flat out say too many times that he closed this door. He closed that door, but you do see hints where God moved and closed doors. One of the natural closest doors is on the ark, uh, the, the, the ark, Noah's ark. It was God that closed that door. Now you say, well, that's a nor- that's your natural door, but it's also uh, different places in the scripture where God closed spiritual doors, <clears throat> which means he shut down opportunities for different reason. And when we are weak, we know what to do. We as, as believers of God, we know what to do when God opens the door. We know how to have praise breaks. We know how to have testimonies. We know how to post positive stuff. We know how to get excited and get happy about it. And that's, that's all good. I'm part of that school too. But when God closes a door, uh, some of us don't know how to respond to it. Some of us, it knocks us off of our rocker a little bit. Because we don't know how to handle it. And I believe because we probably doesn't minister from this a lot. We doesn't we don't prepare people. We prepare people uh for, for, for the yes of God, but we don't prepare people for the no that comes from God. So I want to talk about it just for a few minutes when God closes the door. A door represents opportunity. Uh, so whenever God opens a door, that means it is new perspective, it is new revelation, it is new experiences, it is new opportunities. It is it is walking from an old to a new. It is a connection that will lead you to your destiny closer or lead you to a new place that will be in the will of God. That's when God opens a door of opportunity. He have given you a way of escape. He have given you a way of advancement. Uh, so this, these are the things, what, what it means to have a door 
open. What is a door? It is a place of escape. It's the way that God will move you from one level of glory to another level of glory, from one dimension of faith to another dimension of faith. Uh, so this this is what doors represents. Well, there are times where God will shut a door for various reasons. It will mess with your psyche. It will if you if you're not careful, if you it can mess with your faith. It can it causes many people, some people, faith to be challenged and their 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 stance in God to be shaken a little bit when God will shut a door on them. Because I believe we have not effectively uh, ministered or, 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 or discussed or examined enough about closed doors and why God periodically does this. Um, the one first reason I want to give you, whenever God closes the door, a closed door does not always, and, and to emphasize the word always, it doesn't always mean it's a locked door. That's point number one. A closed door doesn't always mean it's a locked door. In other words, God may have closed the door temporarily. Let me give you an example before we get deeper into this. I just gave you examples of, of open door. A open door, in case I didn't, let me do it right now. Examples of open door, if, if, if you was in one place and all of a sudden God uh, gave you a promotion and you got a whole different feel, a new job, new house, uh, new marriage, new relationship, new friendship, uh, new finances, uh, uh, new anointing, etc. Different things, new healing. God can give you a whole. It exposes you. This is good here. It exposes you an a, a open door. It exposes you to a different or a deeper level level of living, uh, and to some aspect, right? So when a door closes, it, it it retracts all I just not said. <laughs> Instead of the new opportunities, it keeps you in the same place. Instead of the new job or the new blessings or whatever it could be, it keeps you right there where you at. And and and, and it, it denies you from advancing into the direction or the area that you had your heart set on going. So when uh, God closes a door, point number one, you must always remember, it doesn't always mean it is a locked door. God may have closed that door temporarily. It may be a door that you are destined uh, to walk through, but the timing is not now. All right. It, it may. So because it's, it's, it's closed now, it mean it won't stay closed forever. You got to remember in Ecclesiastes chapter three, it says there is a time for everything. This is what most people cannot uh do not take the time to understand and I hope we do today there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens listen here you can look on the newscast and I got it on my iPhone and stuff and I love to watch it cuz it says tomorrow this is the temperature projected temperature but uh, the part I really like is it says around this time in the morning when the sun is projected to rise around this time in the evening when the sun set is uh, projected to set sun is projected to set. It can project or try to predict the sun's rise and the sunset timing. If we can do that with a natural S U N, if a natural S U N sun doesn't just pop up at two in the morning. It doesn't just pop up at three or four in the morning. Why do we shortchange uh, our heavenly father and his S O N and think that the timing of God is, is never a, a major thing or some small thing. Timing beloved is everything. The closed door that you may be experiencing right now and your heart is broke and your faith has been, been shattered or at least if it ain't been shattered, it's been shook. Everybody who listened to me, at some point in time, your faith has either been shattered or shook or both. Shattered would mean it was broken in pieces and it took you some time to heal from that. Be real about it. You didn't just grab a tambourine and keep on going. It took you some time to, to recover from that, that, that shattered faith moment. And then sometime you've had your faith shook, which means it didn't break. But for a moment, it did shake you. But you regained and got your composure and kept on travel, uh, progressing in God. 
But even through that, you have to understand and accept that God moves in his timing. Just like the sun setting and rising, he got it set for a certain timing and he doesn't break his rules and say, since you praise me, this is the stuff that we have praised. We have taught uh, in a bad manner uh, in the past in our churches that if you praise God, you'll cause God to move for you. Yeah, that's partly true. Can be partly true, but you can praise God till your teeth fall out, but you're not going to make God move in a season where he's has not destined for him to move, destined for him to move for you. The timing of God is impeccable. The timing of God is important. I say again, a closed door does not always mean it's a locked door. One of the hardest things for us to accept is that things happen in God's timing and not ours. I'm going to say that again. I should have dropped the bomb right there. One of the hardest things for us to accept is that thing happens in God's timing and not ours. Timing is everything. That's why you shouldn't compare yourself to one another. You are not on the same time level of nobody. You are not on the same time schedule of nobody. Even if you are identical twins, came out the womb two and a half seconds from each other, you're still not on the same timing. God may be using this time of closed doors as a time to prepare you for what is to come. And when you have a tantrum or a spiritual pity party and try to make God move because you're going to wear God down, there's some of the teaching I heard too, and I really don't, I understand the press, the purpose behind it. I really do. I understand the point behind it. But at the same time, I don't like how it sounds humanly wise because you can't wear God. You don't want to wear God down if it's not his timing, if it's not your timing. I'm telling you, timing is everything. Again, some doors may not be locked. They just temporary closed. So this is where you have to, and I'm going to end up in the end, what you do when God closes the door. So I'm not going to let the cat out of bed. That's number one. Number two. God may be putting a hedge of protection around you. I said, God may be putting a hedge of protection around you. If God closes the door, it may be because he wants to protect you. As humans, we often make decisions that are, which can be harmful to us. It may be in uh, dating the wrong person, bad business deals. I've been there, other financial deals or even missing a flight. But but he always have our spiritual safety in mind. You don't know the stories of some certain people who have never missed a day at work. But the morning in the, the World Trade System, World Trade Centers, the morning that that attack happened, uh, something happened where they could not go to work. God closed that door, and I want to tell you what's what's very important. God can close a door and we can be stubborn or, 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 or unrestful where we can try to manipulate that door. You know, you can break open a closed door. And you can't do that always with God's, but you can mess around and try to jimmy the lock, rig it up to manipulate yourself on the path where you want to go. When God already said no, man, I got so many examples in my in my head from scripture that I want to share this with you, but it just take me past my 30 minutes. But Balaam, God told Balaam not to go. He said, well, yeah, but he changed his mind and let he changed his mind. He just told gave he gave in to Balaam what he wanted to do because Balaam was trying to jimmy a lock and go somewhere and get something naturally. And God said, that's all right. You're going to go, but I'm going to, I'm going to order your mouth. I'm going to, I'm going to take your words from you. Every time you try to curse my people, I'm going to bless them. And I'm going to have the donkey try to warn you, but he didn't want to see it. Sometimes God can close a door, but you can keep trying to jimmy a lock and slide something in between it to make you make it, to make it. And then we want, and then sometimes we want to testify that God blessed you and you know, God didn't bless you. Sometimes when God say, no, leave it alone. Quit trying to jimmy it. Quit trying to beg God for to, to do what you He already told you no. Sometimes, and I got all that from this right here. Sometimes God can be saving you from a, a, a burning building. 
But if you say, no, I ain't missing work, I'm going to keep on doing it, and you find a way. You find a way to get up in there. Only when you look back at it and realize, had I understood that maybe this was God that was trying to uh, keep me or put a hedge of protection around me, I would have not have experienced the hurt that I'm experiencing. We may think that this opportunity or that decision uh, is an amazing one. Uh, uh, and, and, and I will frustrate it if things don't work out. But God has a big has a bigger picture in mind for us. Everybody have heard stories about people missing their flights only to find out that the plane had crashed. God often protects his children by closing doors, sometimes temporarily, and I'm telling y'all, sometimes for our own protection. You have to recognize when God shut this door, maybe this one of them doors that is not locked, maybe this is one of them doors that God have shut so he can protect me. And when you think that God have shut a door so he can protect you, then the best thing for us to do, if I can put it uh, flat out, is shut our mouth and tell him thank you and let it be. Number three, a closed door may simply be a redirection. That sometimes God will close a door to redirect you. Sometimes we tend to get laser, laser focused on our projects or what we want. Listen to us now. I mean, we get tunnel vision, man, on our projects or, or what we want to, to where we don't really care that much about anything else. On occasion, God has put a roadblock or a closed door on one of our projects or whatever we're trying to do. And when you look back at it in hindsight, you realize that maybe God was trying to redirect me. God may close a door to redirect you to what is really important. God, can, you, can, you could be at a place where you see him saying, you know what, this is where I want to be. It could be, it could be a, thank you, Lord. It can be a pit stop. A pit stop was never meant for you to kick up your feet. A pit stop was never meant for you to stay. It was a tent. One of the worst things you can do is make a house where you were supposed to build a tent. One of the worst things you can also do is build a tent where it was supposed to, where you were supposed to build a house. Sometimes God puts us in temporary places, but we want to make it permanent places. So God had to step in and shut doors so he can redirect you. I'm reminded right there of Elijah down at the brook of Kedron. The raven fed him meat in the morning and in the evening. And the Bible says he drank from the brook. Come on, brother. You got fresh, you got fresh, the sunny water. Better than the sunny. <laughs> you got Aquafina water coming from heaven, from the Jordan. And you got good old meat, cooked medium, man. Wagyu beef <laughs> coming from that, uh, that, uh, that a crow is bringing to you. He could have said, you know what? I'm on God been good to me, and this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. And the Lord dried up that river and caused that raven to stop bringing that meat. So his hunger, he God shut the door and used Elijah's hunger to redirect him to where he's supposed to go. Sometimes God will shut a door to redirect you or force you to go where you want to go. I remember I told you about God shut Noah's door, uh, Noah's ark door. Well, I'm going to give you another illustration where God shut a door, and this was a spiritual one and a natural. God shut a door, and it didn't say it flat out. Do you remember when Adam and Eve was in the garden, and after they ate the fruit, the Bible said that there was an angel that showed up that put them, drove them out of the garden, but the angel stood at the gate or at the doorway of the garden with a flaming sword to ward off anyone that would try to come back in the garden. That was God redirecting them. That was God closing a door for their protection. He was redirecting and he was closing the door for their protection, which was in turn our protection so that we won't eat the tree now and live forever in sin. Tree of life. So these are showing you how God will close doors. So that's point number three. A closed door may represent 
a, rep- a redirection. Number four, two more. Number four, a closed door may mean just move on. It's time for you to move on. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to put it no, 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 no pretty way. It may be time to just, just move on. Yes, God may close a door temporarily. Or for our safety, he may redirect us. But he also may be simply saying, you ready? Let me see if I get my palm on this one, man. He also may be, he also may be simply saying, no. I won't put the bar behind that because sometimes God, you know, we like to suck, uh, pretty it up and say, not right now. And, and yes, sometimes God will comfort you and say, it's delayed, but not denied. But then sometimes God will flat out say, no. And that's how it feel. It feel like he dropped a bomb on your prayer request. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody do. When an opportunity slips out of our reach, or we face a disappointment in life, God may be telling us that it's time to move on and go in a different direction. Some people have a problem with this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. that wants you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. Some person you will believe in that God is going to give you as a husband. And all of a sudden, this person that got married, that had five and a half kids. I know you can't have half kids, but I'm being funny. He done had five and a half kids and, 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 and got, got his dream house. And all of a sudden, he getting ready to be a grandpa. And you still have been saying that God, that's your husband, and he going to come to you. It's been time for you to move on. Go in a whole different direction. This one is often the toughest one to deal with, y'all. We have had our hopes and our dreams set on this one thing. It can be a promotion. It can be another baby. It can be a new house, a better job. But God's plans are not always ours. A closed door here may be, may be God telling you that we need to forget about that thing and move on to something else, something that he wants you to go towards. I know it's hard to swallow, but you got to swallow that. It may be simply mean it's time for you to move on. Point number five, a closed door may mean that you may have taken your eyes off of God. This is the last one here. We as humans, human beings, I'm telling you, we're a trip. We tend to think that we got everything under control. This is me many times in my walk with God that we can handle something. We think we got everything under control that we can handle, but we still got can handle it. And it's at moments like this that God may close the door to remind you that he is sovereign, that he is in control, not you. A closed door may be God's way of refocusing your attention towards him. It could be something you loved. It could be something that brought that water you. It could be something that made you excited. It could be something that helped make you happy. And all of a sudden, boom, door is shut. Now, all of a sudden, you're you facing eviction, you facing uh, uh, unemployment, you facing health scare, you got all kind of stuff. Out of nowhere, man, you was partying and living a life good, and all of a sudden, boom, you don't got something, <laughs> news hits you out of nowhere, and immediately we start blaming the devil. Sometime it could be God using the enemy, and he have closed the door because you gotten your eyes off God. And God is simply, like my daddy would say, Boy, he's trying to get your attention. And let me tell you something. When God is trying to get your attention, he will get it. He knows what strings to pull to get your attention. I'm tired of people trying. I'm tired of people misrepresenting God. Make us feel like God is just a a uh, weak namby pamby God who always patting you on your back and in, agree, in agreement with everything we say and do in, in life. That's not the God that I serve. God that I serve will check you. 
And then it's almost like he have the audacity to say, can you hear me now? He moves in smooth ways. So these were five points here to show you what do you do when a door or why a door may be closing. Now, in the end here, I want to just say, what do you do? I want to answer this point. When God closes the door for any of these reasons, this is what you do. And, I, and my mama would say it 150 times, and it still ain't enough for me. You simply trust God. Let's add a little bit more to it. You simply trust and obey God. He is your heavenly father. You have to believe that he's better than any mother or father that's been in your life. And if you believe that, then anytime your mother would take something out of the baby's mouth, it's not that she don't want you happy. It means it could be she don't want you to choke. So when God says no, I don't care how disappointing it could be. I don't care how much we want to have a tantrum. I don't care how our natural eyes cannot see or our little infinite, infinite mind, a finite, our finite mind can't comprehend. We have to know that we know that we know that Father knows best. I trust God in the words of Bishop Jakes when I can't trace God. When I don't know what he's doing, I don't have a rhyme or reason. I can't follow his motives. I, it don't make sense to me. And frankly, it make me look at God sideways. When your flesh feel like that, you have to trust in God. Trust God when it don't make sense to your human faculties. This is what you do when God closes the door. Get your uh, human opinions out of it. Do not allow your mind to examine your God and try to bring an accusation against him that he's not just. I'm telling you, stop the press. Don't let your mind go down that road because you're going to end up looking bad. Because our God is just. We don't know what we're doing. We don't even have need. We don't even know what we should pray for. The Bible, the Bible just slaps us in the face in a, in, a, in, a, in a subtle way. You don't even know what you need to pray for. Who it was Joshua prayed and asked God, but did the sun stand still? And the next verse says, and the sun stood still. Most people don't even catch that. Joshua asked God to do something that God, that the sun, would, the sun don't move anyhow. The earth revolve around the sun. But from Joshua's perspective, the sun rises and falls and it goes and moves. And when he said that to God and God said the Bible didn't answer, the Bible answered and the sun stood still. God answered according, he answered back in a way that, his, or that man's perspective saw it. God knew what he meant. We don't know how to even pray we don't know what jobs to take. We don't know what moves to make. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know why we can't have this car. We don't know why God said no to that house. We don't know why God haven't sent you that spouse. We don't know why God haven't healed you the way you thought he going to heal you. We don't know why you feel that God did not show up when you thought he would show up. We don't know, but I do know that I know that I know that I know that if God be for me, who can be against me? I do know that I know that I know that my God is not a liar. And if he said it, he going to perform it. I do know that I know that I know that if God be for me, who can be against me? I do know that I know that I know that if God is walking with me then wherever we gonna end up in it's gonna be my destiny I do know that I know that I know I have to stretch out on everything I have with tears running down my eyes disappointment and sometimes a broken heart I still have to look up and say naked I came into this world and naked I shall return blessed be the name of the Lord which means you have to trust in your God regardless of how your body feel about it regardless of how your mind feel about it regardless of how your friends feel about it regardless of how your, your opinion feel about it you have to trust in God 
Flat out, period. Now, let me pray and help you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this word was conveyed in the right manner. I pray that it strengthened us from our spiritual ankles all the way up to our mind, God. Let everything in us, God, trust in you and learn that after so at the time, we don't even really trip over your nose anymore. We don't even trip over your nose anymore because we know that your nose is just a temporary thing and you're getting us where you want us to be. We thank you right now. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's what you do when God closes the door. Know that I love you. See you next time. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty and the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.